This time on Railroad Australia. Forged by fire. Nerves of steel are needed. Oh, here we go. To get this load across a burning desert. We don't want to stop. We basically want to keep it going. A busted loco gets master mechanic Mick steaming. Oh, no. I am going to kill someone. And the paper train races to Melbourne to save a mill from shutdown. Upwards of $10,000 per hour for any machine to shut. They are the kings of the Australian outback. You've got to concentrate all the time. Some of the biggest trains in the world. If things go wrong with these things, it normally makes a big mess. On epic journeys. It's a bomb on wheels. Up through a hostile continent. Holy crap! Have a look at all this water. A nation depends on them. Well go boys, get in the And the teams that keep these metal monsters on the tracks. Hauling huge loads of food, freight and mineral riches across incredible distances. We are out in the middle of nowhere, that's for sure. Big trains. It'll be a massive challenge to us. Big country. No one's ever done it. We'll see how we go. The Nullarbor, Australia's dead zone, where temperatures can reach 50 degrees by day and below zero by night. And what this train is hauling also had its birth in extreme temperature. Australian made steel. We rely on rail networks a lot to transport our product because of the size and the scale of the thing. It'll be steel that's wrapped up in a coil, but when you unwrap it, it will roll out to something maybe around a kilometre long. The steel is needed on the other side of the continent. Without it, entire industries could grind to a halt. I enjoy driving the trains in the desert. It's like a bronco running through the prairies. You feel free. You're on your own. Nobody's bothering you. Rail company Pacific National will need 13 drivers over four days, working non-stop around the clock. We are getting ready for the graveyard shift. And a 1.4 kilometer train. Strong winds, been known to blow trains over to transport the 5,500 tonnes, 4,000 kilometres from Port Kembla, across three states to Perth. The first relatively easy leg to South Australia is complete. This is a fair distance, travelling across the desert. Now, driver Richard Robinson picks up the reins to take on the biggest challenge, the outback. Yeah, this reading at the rear is stuck on 331. There's no movement at all. You got another SPU? And the troubles begin. So when it rains, it pours. We're still having issues with this uh, SBU at the rear. The SBU, or sense and braking unit, is attached to the back of the train. It has a red light indicating the last wagon, and it sends electronic information back to the driver. It's a bit frustrating when you've got to rely on the screen of the computer to... Uh, give you the okay to depart. Richard's at the helm of three NR-class diesel electric locos. Each weighing 132 tons and packing 4,000 horsepower. These are the long distance runners of the rail industry. The lead loco alone has traveled over 5 million kilometers, the equivalent of going to the moon and back six times. We hear the beep and we think maybe something's going to happen, but it's not. But right now, it's not going a metre further. So take the three locos out and turn the whole lot, change ends, so... The plan is to swap the back loco with the front. Yeah, train's down here, Stephen, Dan. Yeah, this NR65 is registering 37238. 
Looks like we won't have to turn him. Richard now has to perform an unplanned shunting manoeuvre just to get out of the yard. With most of Australia still to cross, this is going to be one long journey. Molden, Victoria. Here, the Victorian Goldfields Railway own and operate a collection of old steam engines. The maintenance crew is led by Mick Compagnoni, a master mechanic. Oh, who did that up? Oh, that's right, I did. Oil it, grease it, fix it, tighten it up, fuel it, water it, light a fire in it, and away it goes. In the shed is a 63-year-old loco, J549, once used to haul passenger trains. Please go and find me the inch and three-quarter. It needs a service, but more concerning is a nasty clunk in the mechanism. But Mick and his offsider Jono face a tough deadline. The loco is needed to couple up with engine K153 and take 200 paying customers on a tourist run. Yeah, you know we need this thing for Wednesday, don't you? Oh, I know, that's why we've got a day and a half left. And I know there's four days work, but it doesn't matter. The biggest thing is there's a, a loud knocking. Now that could be somewhere in the frame, it could be around the axles, it could be the valves. We just don't know. It's difficult physical work. Oh, hell! And under mixed rules, it has to be done right. Hey, turn that shifter over. Thank you. Above all, it's a dirty job. This one is an oil burner, so... Some people might say my hands is all black at the moment, but watch this. Now it's black. This is what the entire inside of an oil burner is like, which um, is a bit rough on my wife, but she gets a new washing machine every three years because my clothes kill washing machines. Yes, the table plate needs cleaning anyway. There's a job for somebody. Well, hopefully it won't be me doing it. That's annoying. With the servicing underway, Mick needs to find the source of the clunk. If it's not taken care of, it could lead to more trouble. The worst thing that can happen if things don't get seen to is, uh, is failures. Metal can, can melt if it's the white metal stuff, if a pin goes. It'll fall apart. There is slack there. Absolutely, there is slack there. Finally, Mick is on to something. That's it, that's it. If you have a small bit of slop in there, when the engine is moving forward, it comes back on the stroke, this thing is shuddering very, very loudly. So hopefully, we're going to fix this problem. OK, right, John, start to rock the reverser. But Mick and Jono could be opening a can of worms. Can you hear that? Where's that? Yes, keep doing that. It sounds like the reach hog to me. It does. It's pretty loud from over here in the cab. I can feel that. That's... I can feel it. That's fairly horrible. Yeah, mate. Right, I got it. 300 kilometres southeast at Maryvale is Australia's last operating copy paper mill. Roger, mate. Winston Martin is running out of time to get the daily delivery underway. What we've got to do is put the empty wagons back onto the container pad so they can be loaded. It's crucial. We've only got about half an hour to do this, otherwise we miss path and we'll be stuck down here for the whole day. The paper train travels 150 kilometres from Maryvale to Melbourne's port, carrying over 1,000 tonnes of paper worth more than a million dollars. We make 600,000 tonne of paper per year. We export all over the world, Europe, Asia, America, China. A train is the only way of getting paper rolls this big to market. But there's been some trouble on the line, and now there's trouble at the mill. With the train tracks work that's been happening in Melbourne, the train couldn't run on the weekend. With two days of undelivered stock, the mills run out of storage space, causing serious concerns for logistics superintendent James Saliba. 
you've got way too much paper for the warehouse, uh, which could potentially mean a machine might have to shut, which is something that we don't want to do because it's a significant amount of dollars per hour if you shut a machine. You're talking like thousands of dollars. You want to avoid it at all costs. For over 80 years, Mary Val's mill has provided an economic lifeline to the people of the Latrobe Valley. It contributes to the region. There's a lot of second and third generation that I know of that I've worked with. But in a global market, the mill's viability is on a knife edge. A shutdown caused by a bottleneck would be devastating. One of my concerns is that the, the, the train leaves on time. So if the train misses its pathway, it doesn't get to Melbourne in time and then we won't get the empty train back in tonight, which causes havoc. Drivers Winston Martin and Damien Lewis will do everything they can not to let this happen. Uh, just wondering what the, what's the latest time we can get out of the mill today. But with the train not even loaded and only half an hour until departure, they need a lifeline. Oh, it looks like uh, if we can't get us to register up in the front loco, we'll turn all three of them and we'll lead out with that in our 65. Richard Robinson's off to a bad start on his section of the massive steel train's epic multi-driver journey across Australia. A faulty sense and braking unit means he needs to swap the lead loco with the rear one. Oh, now it's come up, has it? But he's in luck. Must have been your magic touch just being here, Lindsay. Thank you. Catch you, mate. Yeah, this SPU has finally decided to behave itself and... Uh, Righto, all good, Russell. We're going to depart. Thanks very much. Less than 50 metres into the train's 2,500 kilometre journey. The yeah, train's only receiving down over. Yeah, just had issues with this ET uh, SBU again, showing no reading. The problem is back. Yeah, a bit frustrating at the moment. We'll uh, turn these locos and lead from the rear one, which will become the front one, and. Uh, because we've tested that one already, we should be all right. With 13 different drivers waiting at locations along the track. Yeah, keep it coming in R91. Plenty of room beyond that. Richard has to perform right the there. shunt fast or risk throwing the schedule into chaos. And safe. You got a smile still. And R65, hope that's a lucky number. All right, we're seeing to have everything working now. Start of a long journey, here we go. About 300 kilometres, and then any other problems, we'll hand it over to my comrades at Port Augusta. They'll be happy. Time to enjoy the scenery and life on the tracks. My first job in the rail industry, I joined back in 76. Well, it was more uh, to get out of school. You know, the parents say, you're not leaving school till you get a job. I had to try a couple of times because they didn't have any positions, but then the third attempt, I said, you better let me in. My mate's working here, so there's no reason why I can't. Apart from the shift work and the weekend work, and eat regular meals and not so good sleep pattern, it's been a pretty good job. But there are more challenges just around the corner. We've got a, a 40 kilometre temporary speed restriction at the 119.7 kilometre mark. It could be that it's um, a crack rail. If you hit it too fast, it could collapse and uh, you know, your, your train probably derails. With 5,000 tonnes on the back, watching his speed is critical. And I'd better slow down for this 40 kilometre restriction. See how they've replaced that bit of rail in there. Because of our delay this morning, we've, uh, they've arranged to relieve me. That's one driver's job finished. 12 more will be needed to get this train to its destination. Steve, thanks for coming out. Good to see you, mate. Nice to relieve you. The new crew will be hoping for a smooth and uneventful run as they enter the next 1,000 kilometres of extreme isolation. That is so going to knock on the wheel. Back at Malden Workshop, Mick and Jono may have found the source of the troubling knocking sound, but it's not what they thought. So, possible new development, it might not be the pin down the link, it might be over here on the block of the reverser, because when we were testing before, there's quite a defined knock coming from somewhere in here. It's not be easy at dropping. But getting to the reversing mechanism will not be easy. 
With the time pressure mounting, Mick's fuse is getting shorter. Can you pass the shifter, please? Not helped by a missing tool. From the VR shifter, that's all there is. <sighs> oh, no. I am going to kill some... What do I have to do? Weld the tools into the loco so they don't move? <sighs> have a wheel. The challenge is made even greater by the 63-year-old engine's design. The J-Class locomotives were actually the last steam locomotive designed for the Victorian Railways. There was no other improvements from this thing. So all the different elements that added to this, such as, for example, this brake pedestal over here that we're working near, whilst it's fantastic and everything's close to you, it just means that you just have a lot of room in there to, to get in there and take things apart. Come on, baby, out you come. Out you come. Eventually, Mick wriggles out a pin from the reversing mechanism. A quick inspection reveals wear and tear. There's a groove around there. You can see it's scoring. Yeah, Some, so something in there's not happy, so that's probably generated more slop in the bush. But it's pretty dry. Bush itself. Even the smallest of parts like this need to be lubricated. And on the top, there's actually a position where you can put oil in to drip feed, and clearly it's just been one of those things that's been overlooked, which is leading to this particular situation. And they won't let me attack people with a large spanner. If the pin is worn down too much, it could be causing the sound. Mick will only know for sure by measuring it. This is a micrometer, and this will tell me the size of something down to one ten thousandth of an inch. I'm just looking at the overall size of the pin to see if it's worn in any particular direction. But basically, overall, as ugly as this pin looks, there's effectively nothing wrong with it. Which brings me back to the bush in the reach rod, which I thought it may be, and that's not gonna be the best fix in the world either. So we've got a load of about 32, 40 foot boxes. At the Maryvale Mill, Winston is running out of time to get the paper train loaded, but getting the trucks into position can't be rushed. The train being loaded will actually pull you towards the mill, so you've got to try and regulate your speed, taking into account that you've got half a train, about a thousand tonne, that you've got to try and stop. At the moment I'm using the independent brake, which is the locomotive brake, and the biggest thing there is you've got to make sure that you don't use too much and uh, lock the wheels up on the loco and skid the wheels, which will end up causing flats on the wheels. Right, you're pulling up. The train's all yours, Falkies. So now we just play the waiting game. Stopwatch is on. They've probably got about 20 minutes. Once it's all loaded and the brake's done, then we can get out of here. Otherwise, here yeah, we'll be stranded here till, I think, 1800 tonight. Logistics Superintendent James takes over getting the 1,100 tonnes of paper loaded. Cube have actually got two reach stackers going for it so we can get the full containers on there as quick as possible for the train to be out of here by 10.30. The race is on to get 32 containers onto the train in less than half an hour. If the train misses its window, the delay could cost thousands of dollars. I'll give control a ring and see if we can get an extension till 11. Yeah, mate, Winston on 9476. Uh, just wondering what the, what's the latest time we can get out of the mill today. All right, so, yeah. Yeah, mate, normally you can slot us in, but, yeah, not today. It's a no-go. If the train isn't ready on time, the mill will be stuck with too much paper and its 850 workers will have to stop production. The cost to the business could be crippling. You're talking like ten thousand dollars for just for one machine not running for one hour. Which is like at Spencer Junction, South Australia, drivers Jamie Miller and Mark Holtham are heading out to meet the cross continental steel train and take on the graveyard shift. Travelling across the vast desert of the Nullarbor, they need to come fully prepared. I've got everything: ham, corned beef, tomatoes. Yeah, you never know, you could be stuck out there. They're heading into one of the most remote and empty places in Australia. But they also face speed restrictions. Five crosses. And may have to stop for oncoming trains. We drink a lot of coffee tonight. This will be a slow, 
arduous journey. She's a heavy train, this one. 5,329 tonne. How uh, long are we? 1,330. Yep, we're all uh, ready to rock and roll. Out back South Australia. Go west, young man, they said. Go west. Just because we're an 80k train doesn't mean we'll be doing 80 kilometres an hour. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, going to be a slow one, I think, because you can feel it. You can't see much out there, can you? <laughs> but they've got company. Another train up ahead. Time for Jamie to rug up. There is my beanie. Every driver should have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bloody Jamie. It's a good thing you call out there tonight. <laughs> the outside temperature is at zero. Is this DA2, was it? Yeah. Once they've pulled over, Jamie must follow one of the rules of the tracks. Check the passing train for any signs of trouble. He'll turn his head like someone's like, I just go past so he can see his side. And I've got to. Can on the wind. We're gonna get a breath of fresh air as it goes past us. The train goes past. So we're just basically looking for the buddy our sparks and any like loaded just. So if we see it, we've got a radio here, I'll call them up, say you might have dragon brakes or a bit of a load adjust, you want to get looked at in the junction there. Hopefully it's all good. Check, make sure you've got yeah, in the train mark on the back of his train, that flashing red light. That, that shows his whole train's yeah, complete. So, you see he's all good. On a tough night shift, getting along makes the job easier. I don't know how long Jamie's been here for. How long have you been driving, Jamie? 12 years now. 12 years, there you go. Yeah, train <laughs> driving a crack. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> The boys may be laughing now, but up ahead is the first of a series of long, steep climbs that will seriously test their sense of humour. Yeah, basically from here onwards now, it's just going up. It's like the little red caboose. I think I can, I think I can. No, I can't. Master mechanic Mick is running out of time to fix a nasty clunk in the J-Class steam engine. He now suspects it may be a worn bushing or sleeve of metal inside the reach rod where it connects to the reversing gear. Whoa! Thank you very much. To test his theory, Mick inserts a pin into the bushing and measures the fit. Whoa! That's reading roughly 35 foul. That's a lot for that position. Damn. So when? I'm going to look at turning up a new bush. Whack it in, get rid of that knock, keep the fingers crossed. It's getting late, but Mick pushes on making a new bushing. He's working within fractions of millimetres. The pin must fit perfectly. Now is where it starts to get really, really stressful because one wrong move, that's a waste of hours of work. Point one. Grind out too much steel, and Mick will have to start again. This is it. Moment of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. We'll be out of daylight in about 15 minutes, so... The safest and wisest thing to do is to press that in first thing in the morning. 7 a.m. One day left for Mick to replace the bushing and finish the service. What we're doing here is just lining it up to press out this old worn bush. That's it. There it is. Now to get the bushing into the eye of the reach rod. It will take two and a half tonnes of pressure. There we go. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. Next, the reach rod must be fitted back in place and the connecting pin reinserted. 
Space is tight. Little hole, big hands. They don't want to go together. So I need this end to go up. Yeah, stop, stop. Come on, baby. In the famous words, Bill Murray and Caddyshack. Yes, it's in the hole. How's that knock? Has it stopped? At the moment, that feels better already. But this afternoon, we'll have a test drive in the yard. And hopefully, fingers crossed, no clunk. Now the race is on to get the loco ready to haul passengers. The boys need to light the fires and start building up steam. To reach full operating temperature takes six hours. Before they can light it up, there's one job that Mick dreads. Now the funnest bit of the lot, I get to climb inside the firebox and clean it. And as soon as I'm out, we can throw a match in it. But there's a shock in store. The firebox is encrusted with ash and charcoal. Getting it up to scratch won't be easy. I knew it needed cool. I didn't know it was that bad. Just wondering what's the latest time we can get out of the mill today. Yeah, yeah, we don't really want to be doing that. On the Maryvale paper train, Winston's called time on the loading, just shy of 1,100 tonnes. He's determined not to miss his scheduled path to Melbourne. The only thing we didn't get loaded was some four 20-foot boxes. Yeah, right, Roger, permission granted to head up to the stop board. We're all good, Damien. Thanks, mate. Right. For logistics man James, four, four containers left. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. A nearly full train is far better than no train at all. A Maryvale mill cannot afford to shut any machines because you're looking at a cost upwards of ten thousand dollars per hour for any machine to shut. If uh, we start cancelling trains, boxes start piling up on the pad, and then they can't actually get enough boxes out of the mill, and so then they have to actually stop production. Winston is joined by driver Damien for the 150 kilometre run to Melbourne Port. We're at the moment uh, seven minutes down. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to make it up. So the train will be about 2,400 tonne and about 830 metres long. The two G-Class Locos have a combined pulling capacity of 6,600 horsepower. It's needed to handle the steep hills ahead. Fair uh, size train, and we've got up some one in 50 grades. So hauling it up there could be a bit of a challenge. That's why we've got a, a lot of horsepower up front. Because of its economic importance, this is the only freight train allowed to access this section of the congested metropolitan commuter network. But they must get in and out of Melbourne before midnight, or a curfew will lock them in. You really need to be on time, and if you're not on time, then you can miss path and then it becomes a struggle to try and get home. Despite the challenges, it's the most efficient way to get the paper to port. If the train wasn't there, you'd have to employ at least maybe 50 trucks a day to move the amount of paper that we do. Ahead is the first hill. And it's about a 1 in 50 gradient, so the locos are working at their maximum to haul 2,400 tonne up the hill. Once we go down the hill, then we can start getting some momentum running and should be able to keep it nearly right on 80. We've just gone over the crest, but we'll keep powering because obviously most of the train's still on the other side. So we'll get some speed up and try and keep the timetable, we'll make up some time. At 80 kilometres per hour, the 2,400 tonne train thunders down the hill. Stopping it would take over a kilometre. Suddenly, so I got the hill there and the speed will just go. In the pitch black of the outback, Mark and Jamie are fighting fatigue, oncoming trains, and now a steep gradient. We'll be going up the uh, Bookalee Bank in a minute. As they struggle to get to their destination on time for the scheduled crew change. With 5,000 tonnes on the back, the boys begin the long, slow climb up Bookaloo Bank. We don't want to stop. We basically want to keep it going. Lucky it's not raining. Hey, 
If she was raining, we'd, uh, I think we'd struggle a little bit. So we'll just get over the top here. We'll be running straight down. Oh, she's hovering. They've reached the summit, but it's not over yet. You still got like one and a half k's of train dragging you back. Sections of the train are travelling at different speeds as some parts are going up while others are going down. The risk is the train could split. I don't really want to be doing that, man, snapping a train. Right, here we go. We'll get a run down here now. With the entire train now over the hill, the next challenge is to hold to the speed limit or risk derailing. Well, we're at about five and a half thousand tonne pushing us down here. And we're just hovering around the 80 kilometres an hour now, so we don't want to keep going over too much. You've got to keep your train under control. As the boys ease off the hill and back onto the flat, it's now the tedium of getting out of the way of oncoming trains. We're doing, doing the waiting, so we'll pull in the loop here and wait for the, uh, the gear to come through. As a freight train, they're low priority and have to make way for passenger trains, including train royalty, the gang. Basically, we're not going to get to where we want to get to because we're getting light shafts and we get put into the loops. These delays could knock the steel train off its schedule, failing to deliver their $5.5 million freight on time. Back at Malden, Mix hard at it in the heart of the J-Class steam engine. He needs to gut the firebox of encrusted grime and slag. This is probably one of the worst jobs uh, from a maintenance point of view. Give me a second. And you can see why. This is the type of stuff that accumulates on the bottom of the firebox here on the oil burner. This is a combination of unburnt oil, and ash from wood because we do light these engines on wood every now and again. It's very dirty in there, it's very dusty in there. It's a job that not many people would want, but it's necessary. Oh. Right now, I need a cold drink. But there's no time to rest. A fire needs lighting. Reaching ahead of steam, takes six hours. Kerosene is the burning medium of choice here because it burns hot, but it's not explosive, so it's not dangerous like petrol. Once the kindling is lit, sprayers squirt oil, which ignites to generate the heat needed. But at the moment, it's just a case of be patient, let it do its thing. All the work that I've done in the last couple of days I won't know if I've been successful and if it was worth it until probably half past four today. So we've got very, very limited time in this location and whilst you can't force the boiler around quickly, we need to get out of here quicker. So we're in a bit of a rush. The precious building. Until we're on steam. Now it's a race against the fading light to get the J549 out onto the track to test if the knock has been fixed. All right, we're clear on this side, Nick. This is the time to get the test and see if that knock is either gone or minimized, so fingers crossed. For a true test, the loco is going to haul a set of carriages. But there's a problem. Will is asking us not to take that. What's he doing with it? I'll find out. Oh. Apparently, somebody doesn't want those particular vehicles moved at the moment. I don't know why. I made my intentions fully clear that I need to test this. We'll see what happens. I'm going to crank the mechanical lubricator, then warm up the cylinders, and we're about ready to rock and roll. All right. Mick has been given the OK to move them. All right, we're going to couple up. Now to see if his hard work holds up. Yeah, you're right. Righty-o, you ready? I'm ready. See you on this side. 
It's now or never. If the test fails, tomorrow's big run will be cancelled. We're about to find out. Put some load on it. The reversal was not banging at all. Yes, there's still things to fix. It's a steam engine. There always will be. But that issue, gone. All right, we better fill this thing up with water then. Yep. The main thing is it can run tomorrow. It can run tomorrow. Fantastic. Job accomplished. The morning of the big event. J549 is coupled up with K153. Mick's already on to his next job. But he takes a moment to see the machines off. Every now and then you've got to stop and smell the roses. Look down there. I can have such a hard time and be so upset with things and people and everything else. But at the end of the day, when I can put something together and make it disappear off down that hill, the sense of satisfaction is at times overwhelming. It's, it's why I'm here, it's what I do. Right. A pedestrian has just run across the track in front of the 2,400 tonne paper train. Obviously certain individuals don't value their life. So the pedestrian gates were closed back there and obviously I've blown the whistle so he knows I'm there. He's just completely ignored it and jumped over it. They don't understand the, um, the ramifications of crossing the railway line in front of trains, especially freight which you know, might take several kilometres to pull up at 80k an hour. You can really play on someone's mind. You've followed all the procedures and they just did the wrong thing. The law-breaking pedestrian marks the beginning of the maze that is the Metropolitan Network. Metro trains, they're stopping all the time, so once we're sort of in the network, we get stuck behind, behind their passenger train. Just sort of go around a corner and all the signals are very close together. Top train on the next. Roger. Reduce, reduce after second. that. Both Winston and Damien have to be extremely vigilant. Yellow. Bottom yellow. On the bottom. Bottom green. Bottom. Roger. Brian on the next. Raj, we, we were both making sure that uh, we were cross-calling. If one couldn't see him, the other one could. Last thing we want to do is go through a red signal. All this has to be done without losing valuable time. All the signals are against us. Junctions everywhere. They must get to port on schedule and leave as much time as possible to allow for hold-ups with unloading. And bottom yellow. Arrive too late, and their return journey will be halted by a curfew. A day driving freight trains, got to solve problems, try and do the best we can to get the freight to the docks. They've got through the inner city web, but straight into another problem. A crossing without signals used by trucks and forklifts blocks their path. It's got to protect the crossing so that we can get across safely without any forklifts uh, going across and interfering with us going across the crossing. Too dangerous to pass without Damien standing guard. So close, but, you know, so far. And we have to make a break with her. Last, they're on to the final stretch. Yeah, we're here finally, on time. Very well train, we're just coming in now, got a light. Over 1,000 tonnes of paper delivered on time, helping to keep the Maryvale Mill open for business. Great light, buddy. Great light. That's it, all done. Yeah, another trip well done, and we finally made it. We're here. <laughs> Paper's delivered. Yeah, I thought we weren't going to uh, make it out on time, but um, things prevailed. Oh, hats off to the crew of Maryvale that got the train uh, loaded in time. 
hauling freight, you know, it actually means something. You, you can see the end product. We got the train back into Melbourne. It's back in time and ready to be turned around again. That's definitely a success. In South Australia, the slow-moving steel train bound for Perth is still waiting for the gang to pass. Uh, we sat there for, what, about, oh, just over half an hour. You know, and that's a half an hour that we've, we're not going to make up now. So, yeah, and depending on our next cross that we get... There's another half an hour. There's another half an hour. So, yeah. But on the next cross, there's good news. Here we go. We've got a, uh, a train sitting here in the loop at Pimba. Must have brought him forward. Yeah. It's one of our trains. That's Gordon. I'm glad we got the main line on that one. That would have put us right behind the eight ball. And their good luck continues. The next train has also yes. been put in the passing loop, giving them priority once more. Woo-hoo! Well, night's getting better. Yep. The early morning's getting better, I should say. Yeah, mate, you're all good through there. You've got a flash of yarn. Good ride, boy. Finally, the boys are clear of oncoming traffic. Life is good. But heading into the sunrise, they face possible danger. Got a lot of cattle getting around, a lot of sheep, and they can just come out of nowhere. So, there you go. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. oh, 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 oh nearly. Oh, nearly. Oh. Most impacts with animals won't stop the train. But if they get thrown under the loco, they can create enough damage to cause a complete breakdown. You couldn't get any more out back than this. You've got nothing out here. So basically, uh, you're on your own. Oh, look at this here up here. We've got a heap of sheep everywhere up here. So let's just see where these sheep will end up to. Oh, oh, oh. oh we've got some on the uh, railway line here too. Oh, look at that one over here. <laughs> Hey, you know where he's going. Oh, here we go. Idiots. At last, the end of the boys' shift has arrived. Good old NR65, and uh, she's got us all the way to lines <laughs> now, and woo we won't see it again. Until the next time. With no accommodation out here, Jamie and Mark move to the sleeper car. Put your pyjamas on, do gym jams. All ready, it's a rock and roll. Good night. Baked beans, sausages, bacon eggs. Happy campers. A fresh crew have risen from their bunks to take the controls and face the infamous nullable. If anything goes wrong, it's the isolation. There's no help or assistance nearby. The steel train to Perth's toughest section is yet to come. <laughs>